Today's program is one of great importance. I want to zero in a little bit on this depopulation. What is it talking about? What, what's the, what could be the signaling event of depopulation that could perhaps, in the minds of many people, solve the issues of taking uh, too much of the energy off of this earth? Well, I believe it very well could be the event that is a signless event as recorded in the scripture for every Christian, for every believer on this planet, both those dead and living, of great expectation. It's referred to in the Christian realm as the rapture. Very soon, I believe, one day, you'll hear the announcement that will be made across the world. We interrupt this broadcast. I can tell you that is chilling words as a child when I was growing up, seeing that kind of announcement come across the television. And they may say, we interrupt this broadcast to bring you a breaking news. Millions of people are missing around the world. And an unexplained disappearance. Clothes are left on the ground. Uh, daycares are emptied as parents run frantically to find their children. Thousands and tens of thousands of accidents. Planes falling from the sky with Christian pilots behind them. I know this may seem uh, somewhat uh, strange to be able to hear for some people that are not uh, have an understanding of what the Bible has to say concerning the return of Jesus Christ. But I can tell you, widespread fear and panic will take over as people will try to find their family members and their friends. Cell phone lines will light up as people attempt to find uh, people who have surrendered their life to Jesus Christ and in a moment have vanished. This was never more real to me uh, than a number of years ago when Hurricane Opal came through the area. I was pastoring at the time in Destin, Florida, and we had uh, gone into Fort Walton for a little bit safer uh, location as they were evacuating the Destin area because of the hit from Hurricane Opal that was potentially to come. And uh, the hurricane came through, and as soon as uh, the roads were open, I made my track on the long way around through the area of Niceville, over across the bridge, and when I came into the city of Destin, uh, it was desolate. There were no emergency sounds and signals that were taking place. It was uh, eerily quiet as the uh, street lights dangled on a single wire and sand was piled up. Uh, I was having to navigate through the streets. And I remember very vividly coming to, as I was going to check on my church and church members and uh, the area to try to do some things, to get things uh, set so that we could begin to minister to the people in the community. And I, would rem I remember sitting at a particular intersection as I was waiting there to uh, try to figure out which direction to go. And in my spirit, I heard the Holy Spirit uh, say to me, this is exactly what it's going to be like after the rapture. It will be uh, eerily uh, still for a lot of people. Uh, the emergency services will be extended to such a degree that people will not be able to get the emergency uh, response that they're looking for. It was a sobering feeling to me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most compelling, prophetic, and signless events in the Bible is the rapture of every believer off of this people planet. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, says this, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, or those that died, that you sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, this is important, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And Paul closed that chapter and said, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. In verse 17, the term and the phrase caught up, those two words, 
is translated in the Greek as harpezio. To, in the translation, it refers to the word that we use often uh, for this event, the rapture, or the sudden snatching or catching away of people off of this planet. So Christians who believe uh, in the rapture will be suddenly, immediately upon the trumpet of God sounding, and that trumpet will only be heard by those who are believers, will be a sudden snatching away of every believer off of this planet. Now, for some, uh, that event is one that they wanna dismiss. In fact, in recent years, uh, the doctrine of the rapture of the church, as the Bible clearly outlines, we'll give to you more information here today, uh, some people would dismiss it. Others have uh, said, you know what, that's escapism. Well, I will tell you, my friend, uh, I'm gonna share with you some scriptures today that are so vitally important for you to understand because uh, whether or not you believe it or not will not stop it from happening. This is not the only passage in 1 Thessalonians. This is not the only passage of scripture in the Bible that describes the event uh, called the rapture of the church. The rapture is referred to in the book of Titus, chapter two, verse 13, as the blessed hope, the hope of the church. This word hope doesn't mean just something nice is going to happen. It means that this event, the rapture, the blessed hope, is a certified fact of a future promise by God that it confidently is going to take place. And with a confident expectation and preparation for every believer, they will see this event. They will experience this event called the rapture of the church. Now, many Christians believe in the rapture, but have a different thought of the timing of this great event. Some believe, uh, as I do, in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Some believe in the middle, uh, uh, the mid-tribulation, in the middle of the tribulation period is when it's gonna happen. And others uh, believe in the post-tribulation, at the end of the seven years tribulation. Well, I believe, my friend, that the Bible verifies over and over again that the rapture of the church, the blessed hope as it's referred to in Titus and other terms that are used in the scripture to describe this signless event. And when I say signless, I'm talking about nothing has to happen before the rapture could take place, before Jesus Christ could come in the clouds and suddenly snatch every believer who has died in Christ, who may have been buried in the ground, but the ground will not prevent them from rising into the air and every living believer off of this earth. I want you to know this event, I believe, is a pre-tribulation event before the wrath of God is poured out, before the judgment, before the tribulation takes place. I believe that there are many passages of scripture that I will share with you today and many others that I'll not have time to share uh, that describe this event in vivid detail. Now again, it's a signless event so it could take place at any moment. Now, I'm gonna to describe to you on today's program how important that it is that you're ready because I wanna say this to you very clearly, that whether you believe it is the pre-tribulation or the mid-tribulation rapture or a post-tribulation rapture, whatever your belief system may be, there is one important fact. You must be ready when this event takes place. For the believers, the Bible says, it will not catch us off guard. But for the many people, many people, who will dismiss this event or not be ready, it will catch them in such shock and awe that they will suddenly fall into a place of fearfulness, especially those who sat in churches week after week and heard the word of God, heard the preaching of God's word, felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit, knew that they should be ready, but wasted away their days of grace. For them, it will be a fearful time because they will have known the truth and know what's coming ahead. I want you to take time to call someone right now and tell them to tune in for the rest of the program because I wanna to describe to you some more information straight from the Word of God that will let you know uh, how important it is for you to be prepared and why I believe the Bible describes the pre-tribulation rapture of the church that could take place at any moment. So stay tuned, I'll be right back.
I want to welcome you back to Prophecy Files, and I am so glad that you've joined us for the program because what I'm describing to you today is the most important event for you to be prepared for. It is the rapture of the church. Some people will dismiss it. Others would say, you know what, that is a conspiratorial, it's escapism. I don't care what you believe about it. It's going to take place. In fact, the early church from the book of Acts believed in it so much that they actually greeted one another and left one another's presence with the word Maranatha, the Lord is coming. That's how important that they believed this event was. Some people in the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians, Paul had to straighten out their doctrinal belief because some false teachers had come in and said, you know what, uh, this event is uh, not gonna take place. Uh, your dead loved ones are uh, gone forever and it, it's not gonna happen. And others to tried to describe it as saying that it was uh, an event that has already occurred. But Paul straightened out their theolo theology in 1 Thessalonians to let them know that that event has not taken place. And ladies and gentlemen, we are that terminal generation right now because we are seeing events that are taking place that are describing what is the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now it's important for you to be able to get the understanding of this, so I wanna put a chart up for you to see right now, a very simple chart uh, for you to be able to follow. It is a timeline of end time events that I believe could take place, and there is a trigger point to this, and it is the rapture of the church. The trigger of the rapture of the church will release the events to take place after in a sequential uh, timeline that you see on the screen right now. We are living currently in what we would identify as the uh, present church age. But the next great event on the calendar of God that is a signless event is the rapture of the church that interrupts the process of things and snatches the bride of Christ off of this earth in a sudden uh, event changing those individuals uh, in, mid, in the middle of the air and meeting Jesus Christ and the loved ones who have passed away uh, that died in Christ, that knew Jesus Christ when they went into the grave, they will be raptured first and then the Bible says, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. That rapture event is what triggers the rest of uh, this timeline. So what takes place immediately following the rapture of the church? We enter into a time period the Bible describes as the seven years of tribulation. Daniel talks about it, the book of Revelation talks about it. And Jesus spoke of the uh, time and what would take place in that seven year period of time in Matthew 24 in vivid detail. He goes in to say uh, initially to his disciples, uh, take heed that you be not deceived. Uh, false teachers, he goes in to say in this entire chapter, false teachers and false prophets will come. There will be wars and w rumors of wars. There will be famine and pestilence and all kinds of events. He describes that time. Jesus himself describes the time in Matthew 24 as being a time uh, when it would be mimicking the days of Noah uh, leading up to the time of uh, the closure of the door at Noah's Ark. And it would be the time, he said, that would mimic the time of the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. So this is important for you to understand. As you're looking at this timeline, you're seeing what is described as the years of tribulation there. Uh, the Antichrist will rise in power, and we'll deal with that on another program. The Antichrist will immediately rise to power. Uh, there will be seven years, this years of tribulation taking place, uh, and at the end, it actually is broken up in Daniel in the book of Revelation is three and a half and three and a half years. The latter portion of it describing the great tribulation or the wrath of God poured out upon this earth. The culmination of that takes place on that timeline with the return of Christ and what we commonly refer to as the second advent or the second coming of Jesus Christ. What, what takes place then? After this period of tribulation time on this earth, the seven year period of, uh, of years of tribulation. Jesus will return back to this earth, the Bible says in Revelation 19, on a white horse with his saint. Now that's important. The saints of God have been raptured off of this earth at the beginning of the seven year period. They're in heaven. This period of seven years where they're uh, in enjoying the presence of God, the marriage supper of the Lamb will take place, and then at the end of the seven years, Jesus comes back on a white horse with the bride of Christ. We come back 
to the place that is described in the Bible as the Battle of Armageddon, the place in the Valley of Megiddo. And after that battle, Jesus sets up in the city of Jerusalem uh, on the throne of God. He sets up his millennial kingdom, a thousand years of peace. The Bible says Satan is bound for a thousand years and Jesus rules and reigns literally. Heaven will have come down at that moment and he rules and reigns with the saints of God in the city of Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem that will come uh, later as it's reestablished after the thousand years. He will establish his kingdom there. So he rules and reigns, Jesus does, for a thousand years on this earth. And then the Bible says there is a time, a short season, when Satan is loosed again. And literally during that millennial reign, there'll be people that will come back with Satan to try to take over the throne. All of this is described in Scripture. When that takes place, Jesus will destroy uh, Satan and cast him. He will be cast into the lake of fire. And then the great white throne judgment, as it is described in the Bible, will take place. After that, it will be an eternal state of uh, the euphoria, the ecstasy, and the new kingdom of God, the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and new earth being reestablished. All of those events we'll have to describe at a different time on a different program. But I'm saying that to you because if the rapture is a signless event, as I'm describing to you, and we're seeing the signs that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24 that are already occurring with wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and so forth, then that is the signs that is letting us know of his return at the end of the seven year period of time. Then ladies and gentlemen, how much closer is the rapture of the church? So here's a few reasons why, and there are many more than this, but these are just a few reasons why I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Number one, God has not appointed us under wrath in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. So the first set of 42 months uh, is the wrath of the Lamb, Revelation 6, 16. The second 42 months, or the second half of the seven years of tribulation, is the wrath of God, Revelation 14, 10. Secondly, the church is not mentioned after the rapture, or, or rather after chapter three in the book of Revelation. The church is not described. We are the body of Christ as described in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. We are the body of Christ in heaven in Revelation 21, 2. So since the church is not described after chapter number three, we must be in a different location. Number three, the tribulation is a time of what is described as Jacob's trouble. If you recall Jacob's trouble in Genesis 29, it describes it very vividly as two time frames of seven years. This is important. Number four, God seals what is his. That is, the church is sealed with the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter one, verse 13 and 14. And there is a sealing of the Jewish remnant uh, in Revelation 14, one. Even during the tribulation period, there's 144,000 Jews that will be sealed evangelists and they too in the middle of that tribulation period, will be caught up into the air to join the bride of Christ in heaven for that seven-year period of time. Now, the following sequence of events could start to take place even today. The rapture, the immediate rapture of every saint of God, and it will cast this earth uh, into a period of time of seven years of tribulation. I would tell you it will be hell on earth. The Bible says men's hearts will fail them for fear. Now, some people get confused between the rapture of the church and the second coming. So let me give you some things, and you can look at them on the screen, that are identifiable uh, between the rapture and the second coming. So let's take the rapture first. Number one, in the rapture, Christ comes in the air for his own. Every Christian will vanish, number two. Number three, uh, the church will be taken to the Father's house. Number four, the rapture is immediate or imminent, I should say, and could happen at any moment. There's no sign, there's no event that has to take place before it can take place. Number five, no signs for the rapture. Number six, it's for believers only. Number seven, before the wrath of God comes, the rapture will take place. It's, it, the Bible describes that vividly, that we will be preserved from the wrath to come. Number eight, afterward, after the rapture, the tribulation begins. Now let's look at the second coming or what is described as the glorious appearing. Here's the events taking place surrounding it. Christ comes with his own, with his own, to the earth. 
So we are raptured in the air, but when Christ comes in the second coming, he comes all the way to the earth. No one is raptured during that particular time. We're coming with him. Number three, Christ comes as the judge of the earth to set up his kingdom in Jerusalem at that time, at the second coming. Number four, Christ sets up his kingdom on the earth. In the rapture, we are caught up in the air. At the second coming, Jesus comes back all the way to the earth. Number five, there are many signs that are given, as I've described to you in Matthew 24 and multiple other passages of Scripture that announce his arrival. Number six, this is important for you to get a hold of. It affects all of humanity. The second coming does. Every eye will see him, the Bible says. The Bible says that it will be a time of mourning. The Bible says it will be immediately after the tribulation. Number nine, Satan will be bound a thousand years. And number 10, in the second coming, every eye will see him. And a thousand years of a millennial reign will take place. Now, it's important for you to know that no man knows the day nor the hour when Jesus will return. Matthew 24, verse 36 and 37 says, that's describing uh, this time period of the rapture of the church. Even though it's described in Matthew 24 here, he's speaking to us concerning the days leading up to the rapture of the church for that particular passage of scripture. This one time event has indicators of all kinds, and I don't have time to describe all of them uh, from the scripture. Now, you say, well, you said that there's no signs concerning it. It's true, but we can know the seasons that we're in, the Bible says, and those seasons should not catch us off guard. The Bible tells us very clearly that the seasons that we're in even now are like those of Sodom and Gomorrah. They're like those of the days of Lot uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah and the days of Noah. But Jesus himself made it crystal clear that we cannot know the day nor the hour, but that season we can know. So how can we be able to pre pre uh, get ourselves ready? Well, the Bible says that we are to be like a bride prepared for the coming groom, that we should have no spot or no defilement according to the scripture in Ephesians 5 and 27. No wrinkle, that is no hidden sins. We should be a holy people. Uh, inwardly, we should be pure. We should be without blemish, that is outwardly pure. And we should be keeping ourselves completely for Jesus Christ, not going around with any other gods or worshiping any other idols or gods. This is important for you to understand. Now, being prepared is an important thing, and that's what I wanna talk to you in my few moments remaining on the program today. Because just like the bride gets ready in a wedding ceremony, as I'm presenting this program and taping this program for you today, uh, just the day before, I performed the wedding ceremony for a particular couple out of our church, and uh, everything that surrounds that event is all about preparing for that one moment when they meet at the altar and they see each other, when both individuals, uh, the, the groom is ready for the bride to walk in, and when their eyes see each other, it is a time uh, that is extremely important and special. Well, I wanna tell you, Jesus has gone, the Bible says in John 14, to prepare a place in his father's house. And just like uh, a Jewish wedding describes, uh, I wish I had time today to be able to talk to you a little bit about that, but I'm running out of time, perhaps on another program. But uh, just like a Jewish wedding, it describes all the way down the events of preparation that gets the groom ready for the bride. And as the church is the bride, the groom is Jesus Christ. He's gone to prepare a place, John 14. And Jesus said, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's the reason why you need to get ready today. You'll not be able to get ready when the rapture takes place. You will not be able to ask the Lord to forgive you whenever that immediate uh, event of snatching every believer off of this earth takes place. You gotta get ready now. How do I get ready, Pastor? You invite Jesus to come into your heart. Repent of your sins. Believe what Jesus did on the cross was for you. He died for you. He was buried and rose again for you. And he is coming again for those that have made themselves ready. If you're not ready, 
pray this simple prayer with me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I need you to save me today. I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. I believe what you did on the cross, that you died for me, that you were buried and you rose again on the third day. And I believe you're coming again. I wanna be ready, Jesus. So forgive me today. Wash me with your precious blood. And I pray right now, Jesus, that you would prepare me, get me ready for the next event when you come again. In Jesus' name, let's get ready. That's what this program is all about. And I pray that you are ready when Jesus returns. Could take place today. So get ready and stay ready because I believe Jesus Christ is coming soon.